So you're struggling on Etsy. Perhaps you're trying to get that first sale, or maybe you have your eyes set on 100 plus orders per day. Either way, this video is for you. We're going to talk about long-term sustainability and building real success on Etsy. I'm going to give you five things that I wish I could go back and tell myself three years ago. You see, I started my shop three years ago. I used to be a fourth grade teacher, and about a year and a half ago, I had built the shop to a place where I could actually quit my fourth grade teaching job and go into Etsy full time. I'm now a six figure seller, and today I'm gonna to give you five things that I wish I could go back and tell myself three years ago. I'm Simply Shauna, and let's get started. First up, while building long-term success in our shops, we need great time management strategies. This might seem like it's not a big deal and you're like, that's no big secret, Shauna, but it is probably one of the biggest deals of all. It's so underrated. When you first open your shop, there is a lot to do that is going to require your time. And let's not forget about the Morky in the room. We know that you are already busy. You already have family time that you are allotting to your family. You probably have a full-time job or you're going to school. And then to add something else on top of that is going to probably take some creativity and definitely some dedication in order to fit the time in needed to learn this new skill. And as you get more and more serious about your Etsy goals, your financial goals, as it relates to your new online business, it's going to require even more time because you're learning how to research and needing to go and do that research, learning how to design, needing time to play with the design apps that you're using, and definitely needing tons of time for YouTube University, if you will, to be listening to content on a regular basis, so you are learning how to do all of these new skills that are so foreign. I don't know about you, but for me, I will listen to a video and then I need to listen to it like five more times. I used to be like that with all of my Etsy stuff, and now that I'm learning this new skill of YouTube, I have to listen to lots of content about how to do things correctly on YouTube. Sometimes videos are so powerful and so valuable with so much new information that you have to rewatch it over and over again. This is a lot of time that's required into learning a new skill, and you're probably already pretty busy as it is. Have I convinced you yet of just how important time management is? It's probably going to be the thing that kind of initially makes or breaks the person that goes on to really change their life with their Etsy shop and the person that kind of puts out before they ever really get things going. Now listen, as far as time management and the things that are going to require your time throughout your Etsy journey, I could go on and on. But because we want to get to some other points in this video, I won't. However, if you would like a dedicated video on time management, please let me know down in the comments because that is something I do have a lot to say about and something I have struggled with. The point here is though that we have to be mindful and intentional with how we are using our time. We need to be reserving time and allotting it where it's needed throughout the different phases in the growth of our Etsy shops. When you first open your shop, we're gonna call that the learning phase. And you're not really going to be making any orders. You're going to be listing without making any money yet because you're learning. You're not good at it yet. Probably the SEO that you're using, your title and your tags isn't optimized. Your listings probably aren't optimized yet. You're just gonna be a lot better at it after you've done it a couple times. But you'll need time to learn those skills, to practice those skills, to get better at it. Once you're on your way in this area and you move into the growth phase of your shop and you're making sales and you're trying to figure out how to make more sales, then you're going to need to be allotting time for your customer service. You're pushing pushing your orders through and keeping those new listings going. If you want to keep growing your shop and making it more profitable, now, let me stop here for a second. Let's just pause because I don't want to scare any newbie off. If you've clicked on this video and you're like, oh my gosh, why, did, why would I want to get involved in this? It is really not that bad. Once you have done that learning phase and you have figured out how to get those sales, that is going to lead you to a place where you actually get more time, more free time later. This past year, I put less time into Etsy and made more money than the year before. So for 2023, I put less time, less input of time into Etsy than I did in 2022, but increased my profit by over $50,000. I gave myself a $50,000 raise, even though I put less time into my Etsy shop. And that's why you hear so many YouTubers call it passive. 
you can give yourself enormous raises year after year and put less and less time into it and keep growing it. And how long that takes to get there all depends on how effectively you're using your time. Are you designating time every day? Because the learning curve is much shorter if you're designating time every day. Are you watching enough content about the things that actually matter? And are you practicing the things that actually matter and that are going to move you forward? Quick pro tip, I did mention that part of that time being used effectively is listening to a lot of content and listening to it regularly. Get creative with that. That does not actually have to come out of your schedule, out of your time at all. I used to listen to content on my way to school, on my way home from school. Now I listen to it while I go for a run, while I cook dinner, while I blow dry my hair. When I go to get my nails done, I stick my earbuds in. When I go grocery shopping even, I put one earbud in and left one out so I'm not rude to someone if they chat with me or talk to me. These are all ways that I listen to content without it taking up any of my other time during the day. At the end of the day, you really just have to kind of sit down, look at your schedule, and see where you're going to designate time to Etsy. And again, I do mention every day. A moment ago, I said that the learning curve is shorter if you're doing it every day, and that's because you're able to pick up where you left off. It is much more effective Going back to time management strategies and making sure you're using your time effectively, it is much more effective to be able to pick up where you left off, to know right where you left off. If you're waiting three or four days to pick up from somewhere that you left off, you're not gonna remember. You're gonna kind of be reworking something. There's been times where I have been designing and then didn't have a chance for a couple days and went back in and didn't even remember that I had been designing and started the whole process again. So you really want to sit down, look at your schedule, Get your content, you're watching your content, you don't even need to put that into your schedule. You just need to make sure there's certain tasks that you do every day, and then while you're doing those tasks, you're just gonna listen to content. And then designate time every single day to going and applying the things you're listening to in that content to your Etsy shop. If you're gonna do this thing, then you've gotta do the thing, and the thing is listing, right? So you have to sit down and actually make time to do that. If you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. So sit down and plan your time out. Love yourself enough to stick to that plan if you want this for yourself. Number two, when thinking about building a long-term successful shop on Etsy, you might wanna consider branding earlier rather than later. Branding, it just means that you are using a certain vibe in your shop, like you've got the same colors, like your banner, the same colors are going on, the same fonts are going on throughout. That goes now into your listing photos. Maybe in your listing photos, you've got some cards in there. Aside from your mock-up photos, the pictures of your actual items, I'm talking about the other photo cards you might use to answer questions, commonly asked questions that customers have that make it give them more of a peace of mind to go ahead and purchase from you. Your sizing guides, they should look really nice and if they're branded and they are cohesive and they kind of look like they go with your shop, this can establish a better feeling from your customers of just feeling like you're an established shop. Now, I say this kind of hesitantly because I don't want that to slow anyone down and I know for me that would have slowed me down. I would have been sitting there trying to make the decisions about all of that and I'm glad I didn't spend too much time going in circles around that and got myself listing. At the end of the day, the most important thing you can do is start getting good at listing, which means you get good at making unique designs. So I don't wanna slow you down there, but I do wish I had paid attention to this earlier than I did. I'm still getting this piece worked out. And in order to have a higher conversion rate, this can help. A conversion rate is the number of people that click on your listing, what is the conversion rate of them actually purchasing it? So they say on Etsy anywhere between one and 4% is normal. I stay right around 2%. And I just think that if my listing cards, the sizing charts, and maybe some of the other cards that I have in there, if I had taken time earlier on to infuse that into so many listings that I already have in my shop, that that conversion rate could be better. So that's something that I had on my list to fix last year and, and it kind of fell through the cracks. It's on my list to fix this year. Number three, 
educating yourself. I know we touched on this earlier when we talked about time management, but let's dig a little deeper. Building sustainable long-term success, keyword there being success, is just not possible in my opinion if you are not educating yourself like crazy. In fact, I think this is so important that I started a group chat with some of my friends that also have Etsy shops and are trying to grow their Etsy shop. Some of them have been more consistent and have better time management strategies than others. Now I started in that group chat with them a daily posting of what piece of content we're going to watch and we all have a day, and on that day, that person has to go into the group chat and post that piece of content. I am always, always telling them, we have to watch the content, it's, your shops are just not gonna grow if you're not watching the content. I am actually starting a new channel with them, I'll still be doing everything I'm doing here on Simply Shauna, but I'll also, in addition to that, be posting a video once a month on a channel that I'm working on with them. We're calling it No Friend Left Behind, and I'll leave it linked down in the description below, we just thought it would be fun to do a kind of a journey channel. I've got my friend Mike who has had one sale, my friend Shay who just passed 100, and my friend Laneda who is past 1000. And we thought it would be really cool to see kind of where they are in 12 months and let you watch that journey since you might really relate to one of their stories. So if you think that sounds interesting, you can go check it out in the description below and subscribe so that you get alerted whenever a video is being posted over there. Now when it does come to this piece of keeping yourself educated, I can't stress enough that I really think you should be educating yourself every single day. And you've got tons of free content to listen to with videos like this one. If you are enjoying this video, I am going to invite you now to go down and boop the like button. That really lets me know that you're enjoying content like this and helps me prepare future content for you in mind. I go in and I look to see which videos are getting the most likes and the most views and I know to make more content like that. I'm also gonna invite you to go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you're not already. That way you know whenever a new video is coming out and maybe I could be your piece of content for the day. In addition to all that free content, you can also go the route of purchasing a course from possibly a YouTuber that you really love to listen to. At the time this video is being released, I do not have a course and I am not currently working on one just yet, but that is in the works and that is something that I plan on kicking the idea around of this year. If you are looking to invest in a course and perhaps accelerate your growth a bit, there are a ton of really good ones out there. I personally did Cassie Johnson's course. Many of you have asked me for a mentorship group, which I am not currently offering. You'll see those pop up with different YouTubers from time to time. I did get in on Cassie Johnson's mentorship group and I thought it was phenomenal. She's no longer offering that, but she does offer it as a piece with her course. I'll leave a link to Cassie's course down below in the description if that's something that you think you'd be interested in. In addition to Cassie, you might check out Heather Studio. I know she has a course and I have found her channel super helpful. Ryan Hogue, uh, excellent channel and I'm pretty sure he has a course as well. See You Online has a course. Her channel's phenomenal. Brand Creators, Starla Moore, especially if you're more handmade. Kate Hayes, Taylor P.O.D. I know is offering a mentorship group right now. I don't think she has a course yet. I think she's working on one. Hannah Gardner, Mandy has a mentorship course, and I'm gonna go ahead and mention Detour Shirts, Hannah, and Insights by Jess. I'm not sure if the three of them have courses, but I find their channels super helpful. And that's really just to name a few. I bet later on today I'll be like, oh, I should have mentioned this other one. Now, if you are thinking of buying a course, I do suggest you going in and really listening to that person and listening to a lot of their content and making sure that you are making the best purchase for you. Again, I will leave Cassie Johnson's link down below. Number four, when you're building a sustainable long-term business on Etsy, you're going to want to consider saving some of that money when you start making it. You don't want to get to the end of the year and not have saved some to pay the taxes with. That becomes easier and easier year after year when you're making even more and your disposable income is growing. But in the beginning, sometimes it can be really tempting to just spend all of those profits. Do yourself a favor and just decide now that you're going to save 30% of it over to the side so that you have it at the end of the year and can cover the taxes. 
Also, you might want to consider reinvesting some of that money that you're making in order to help yourself grow faster. You might consider one of those courses we just mentioned, or maybe trying your hand at Etsy ads to see if you could get faster growth that way. And then there's a ton of other types of resources that I know tremendously helped me. I bought a bunch of different calendars from different YouTubers that I really enjoyed because in those calendars, they've done all the research for me to let me know when to start listing for something and when to have it listed by. I've gone ahead and started working out my own calendars in this area. I do have a teacher one and a Q4 resource that I'll leave linked down below. And I just completed my general niche calendar. So it's got kind of a little bit of everything in there. I tried to add a lot of things in there that I thought would be really helpful. They are actually helpful for me. And I had my friends in mind when I created it, things that I know they are needing. But not only do you have three pages per month, where you have a listing view with things that you should be working on, then a calendar view of when to start them and when to have them listed by. You also get a third page that has some extra helpful bits of information about particular niches that you're working in for that month. It'll also give you 40 plus product ideas. And my favorite is the 25 broad evergreen niches. And then those are all broken down into 150 plus sub niches, including professions. Remember when we said if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Having a resource like this is really having a plan. So I'll leave this link down below if you're interested in it. I'll also leave Cassie Johnson's link down below if maybe you think you would prefer hers. And I'll also leave a video, this video here linked down below, as I explain one way that you can research these types of niches and then you can make your own calendar. Number five, when building long-term success on Etsy, we need to make sure along the way we are managing our mental health. If we're not doing that, we're probably never going to be able to plug along long enough to see that success anyways. Opening your own store and being a legit store owner can be really exciting. And then designing things and seeing them in your own actual little shop where you could go online and show others, hey, look, here's my store and these things I created. That can all be really exciting. And then when we start thinking about the financial gains that we're hoping most likely to achieve through our Etsy shops, it can become kind of addicting to continue listing. For me, it really became all consuming and I started to become filled with anxiety as the months passed, but I wasn't really making any money for my efforts. And that happened month after month when I first got started. You can really almost become obsessed with the idea of getting those sales. I know for me, I used to wake up and I probably did this for at least the first two years of the shop. I probably only stopped doing this less than a year ago, honestly. I would wake up, if I woke up in the middle of the night, the first thing I did was I grabbed my phone to see if I'd gotten a sale or very first thing in the morning before I would get out of bed and have one, you know, my head on the pillow, I'd open one eye and be looking at the, at the phone, trying to see if, did I get an order through the night? And then inevitably most mornings I would wake up to no orders and my heart would plummet. So you're really going to want to make sure that you're managing your mental health. And you can do that by going back to that piece of time management. Use your time wisely, use it effectively, stay on task when you're working on your Etsy shop, get what you need to accomplish during the time that you left for yourself to work on Etsy. And then also a lot time for yourself time to enjoy going out to dinner with friends, time to reward yourself maybe at the end of an Etsy work session with something else. Maybe you're gonna take a walk to the park, get some fresh, fresh sunshine, which in and of itself can be a mental health strategy. And then once you do start making sales, you might get a really rude customer that comes in and says something not nice to you in, the, in your messages, or even worse, they leave you a one-star review and say something terrible. I know for me that that just really deflated me when that first started happening. One thing that can really help you with this and put it into perspective for you is going back to that YouTube university, all of that content that you're listening to, listening to how YouTubers, because all the people that you're listening to had those same feelings. We all did. We've all encountered this. Go back and listen to how they deal with those situations, how they suggest feeling about it, knowing that others felt the same way that you do 
can really, really be reassuring and can help you get over that bump. And it's hard to design and keep being creative when you're feeling upset about stuff like that. So we have to just find a way to shift our mind and not look at it in a bad way. And I know another thing for me, when I first got those initial bad reviews or that mean comment, I went, oh no, did I do something wrong? It was like this imposter syndrome, they call it. Oh no, maybe I shouldn't even have my own Etsy shop. I'm doing something wrong. That's not it at all. If you made the mistake, use it as a learning lesson. And if your print on demand company or ship something went wrong with shipping, then that's just business. There's gonna be a certain percentage of times where that happens. We got this, you guys. Let's do this Etsy thing. Let's build long-term success on Etsy. If you are struggling with that mental health part and you're feeling a little defeated, then I've got the video for you. Click on the one that pops up next, but of course, not until after, that tip from Tucker. Tucker, take it away. Oh.